As a candidate, Donald Trump said things that were often contradictory. On financial regulation, he said, throw it out. We don't need Dodd-Frank. We have too much regulation. And then he said, bring back Glass-Steagall. Which Trump are we going to get? In the first year of his administration, he'll have major appointments where essentially in the world of financial regulation, policy is personnel. Often, people who come from Wall Street tend to be the hardest on their former colleagues. They know where the bodies are buried. The key question, I think, has to do not only with what are somebody's priors, but how effective are they going to be at moving the needle? It's particularly true at the Federal Reserve, where uh, Trump will have the chance to appoint two people, including the vice chair of financial regulation of bank supervision, a newly created role under Dodd-Frank, and that will be, I think, the single most important financial services appointment he makes in the first year of his presidency. The Trump rhetoric was a giant pullback from global financial services regulation. After the financial crisis, the policymakers did a double down on central banks. The Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, the European Central Bank all gained new regulatory authority. A lot of them coordinate. This doesn't have to be the case. And the U.S. could go it alone and choose a very different path. Will Trump's uh, appointments and will his personnel reflect the candidate that you saw that was much more skeptical of global coordination or a lot of the entrenched current interests which have tended to favor a more globally coordinated strategy, particularly for globally active financial institutions. Mayor LaGuardia famously said there are no Democratic or Republican roads, yet infrastructure has become an increasingly politically polarized issues with Democrats historically wanting to invest more and Republicans being more concerned about the deficit. President Trump may cross traditional lines and could create a unified coalition of progressives that want to invest more in infrastructure, businesses that are looking for new public-private opportunities and investment vehicles, and fundamentally, construction workers that want jobs. Are we going to do a new model? Are we going to invoke a national infrastructure bank, expand public-private partnerships, or bring in private capital in a meaningful way to create new economic activities for developers and to maximize the economic value of the infrastructure assets we build.